So I've been receiving a lot of questions in regards to working through this mathematically. Now, don't worry, this is a common hang-up point. Many of you haven't really done this math since early high school, maybe even late junior high, right? And yes, this is going to be pretty intense. We're going to go through a lot of this algebra for the next few chapters. And then we're going to kind of start to move a bit more into theory, but this never really leaves us. So it is important that you're asking these questions. It is important that we get this cleared up. So quite a few questions have something like these two being provided to us, right? We have, okay, price equals 115 minus 5Q and price equals 6 plus 6Q. And then we ask you something like, hey, what is the total benefit received when we are consuming nine units? And you're like, okay, cool, marginal benefit. Hopefully you're like, marginal benefit, okay, I know that's demand, but which out of these two equations is my demand equation? Which out of these two is my supply? Problematic, right? So, okay, the way that we can really get this straight, the way that we can really identify these is keep in mind, if we're taking a look at our equations, so we would have price, we would have quantity, we know that in this realm, demand is downward sloping, right? This is my demand or my marginal benefit or my maximum willingness to pay. We know that it's downward sloping. That is, every time I add a quantity, my price decreases. Quantity up, price goes down, right? I have this inverse relationship between the two. What that means what that means is that I have a negative slope, minus 5Q, right? What this really is saying is every time I go plus one quantity, my price drops by $5, right? So negative, well, negative would mean that this guy is my demand, negative slope. The other one here, right? We could, we could just pop that in, 115, there we go. Our other guy here, our supply is saying, okay, 6 plus 6Q. So, okay, keep in mind again, same kind of idea. Our supply is upward sloping. There's my supply or my marginal cost or my minimum willingness to accept. This guy's upward sloping, meaning every time I add output, add Q, I also have a positive increase in my price, right? These two both move in the same direction. Q up, P up. That is, we are positively sloped. So this guy here is our supply. So the first bit in there, how do you differentiate which of the equations belongs to which? The negative slope is your demand. The positive slope is your supply. From here, we then have questions that we'll typically work through for this. And they'll be along the lines of, well, as we have here, it'll be something like, hey, what is our total benefit? when we consume nine units. So I can just abbreviate that when my quantity demanded equals nine. So what that's doing is it's going to my demand curve here. So okay, being that I'm focusing on demand, I'm just gonna get rid of that supply side just so we can focus on this demand. And I'm saying, okay, when my quantity demanded is nine, so let's just pick a point and pretend that's nine. Let's say something like that. Quantity demanded is nine. What is my total benefit? Now, okay, keep in mind, this is my marginal benefit curve. So when I go Q equals nine, this corresponding price, well, that is my marginal benefit or my maximum willingness to pay. My total benefit, well, my total benefit is the area aggregated underneath this entire curve, right? So that'd be this entire funny shape here. Shade all that in, right? All of this guy, that is my total benefit. So if I were to kind of give a geometric name to each of these guys, I could call that A. Uh, okay, I shaded it. We get that point. We'd have point A, point B, point C. In this case, my total benefit, total benefit, that would be A plus B. It would be those two areas together. So 
I need to work out what this area under the curve is in order to find that out. And what we notice is, hey, A is a triangle, B is a rectangle. So if I just add these two shapes together, I'm going to get my total benefit. Problem with what we're presented with right now, we don't know what this price is, right? We don't know what this cutoff point is. But we can figure it out, of course, right? If we go back, we say, okay, this is my demand line being represented by that line. If I throw in some value for Q, I get some value for P. So price equals 115 minus 5 times 9. So, okay, 5 times 9, that gives me what? 45? 115 minus 45? That's going to give me a price of 70. So there we go. I have that price. I have that marginal benefit. That's how much extra benefit I received from my ninth unit. Or alternatively, that was the maximum price that I was willing to pay for nine units of this good. But okay, keep in mind, that's not what we're looking for. I didn't say what's the marginal benefit of our ninth unit. I said, what was the total benefit when we consume nine units? That is, we're looking for this area A. We're looking for this area B. So to work that out, area of a triangle, right? Area of a triangle, that is one half base times height. Area of a rectangle, just base times height. So in each case, what's our base? What's our height? Well, for both of these guys, we could go from nine all the way down to zero, right? Right there, zero. 9 minus 0 gives me a base of length 9. And then, so okay, that's my base for both of these guys, actually. 9, 9. To work out my height for each one, well, what do I have? I have from 0 up to 70. And then I have from 70 up to 115. So for B, I have a height, 70 minus 0. Well, 70 minus 0, that's... 70. And then for A, what's my height? Well, from 115 down to 70. So 115 minus 70 gives me a height of 45. 45. And this guy here was my height of 70, right? Height of 70, height of 45. So working these guys out then, what do I get? I get 0.5 times 9 times 45 gives me 202.5. And for area B here, base of 9 times height of 70. So 9 times 70 gives me 630. Add these two together, right? We said total benefit was A plus B, triangle plus rectangle. So 20250 plus 630. Well, that's going to yield a total benefit. I'm just going to abbreviate that TB for total benefit of 832.50 as my total benefit. So we worked that out. We worked that out. Great, nice and easy. Well, maybe not nice and easy. There's quite a few steps in there, but it's not terrible. Well, what happens if we switch this up, though? What happens if we ask this just slightly different? And let's say in this case here, we said same equations, but in this case here, I'm saying, hey, what is our total benefit when price is 75, right? So in this case here, we don't know what our quantity consumed is, right? And that's what we're interested in, total benefit, demand, marginal benefit. So total benefit goes to demand. We want to know, hey, what is our total benefit when the price is 75? We know the price. We don't know the quantity in this scenario. So first step for me, I always like to graph it. I always like to see what I'm playing with. So there we go. We're going to have price. We're going to have our quantity. And let's go and say that gives us something like that. There's my demand or my marginal benefit. That uh, intercept there, right? Minus slope, demand, I knew that. And then 115, that's my intercept. 
Okay, price of 75. So something like that, let's say, and then going down. So there we go, we have 75, and again, we have this area of A, B, and C, where my total benefit again is gonna be A and B. Again, okay, A is a triangle, so one half base times height, and B is a rectangle, so that's just base times height. In this case, I know my heights right off the start, right? I know, okay, zero all the way up to, 75 and 75 all the way up to 115. So, okay, what's that? Height of B, 75. Height of A, 115 minus 75 is 40. So, okay, I have my heights. The question remaining is what is my base of these guys? I don't know what my quantity demanded is at a price of 75. I need to solve for that. So in this case, demand, so let's pull forward our demand equation. Price equals 115 minus 5Q. And keep in mind, I know what my price is. So let's update that. 75 equals 115 minus 5Q. And then from here, well, we have one unknown. We just are like, hey, what's this Q? That's what we need to solve for. So we rearrange and do a bit of algebraic voodoo, find our unknown. So to do that, I'm going to add 5q to both sides. So 75 plus 5q equals 115. I want to get this 5q by itself, so subtract 75 from both sides. I'm going to get 5q equals 40. Get the q by itself, so divide both sides by 5, and I'm going to get q equal to 40 divided by that should be 8 if my mental math serves me. Um, there we go. So we have our quantity demanded, and right, we're going from 0 to 8 there, so altogether our base is 8. Now we have everything we need to solve this. Our triangle, 1 half base, well I know that base is 8, I know the height is 40. And okay, yeah, carry forward that one half. So 0.5 times 8 times 40, that's going to give me 160. My rectangle here, B, base of, well, again, base of 8, height of 75. That's going to give me 8 times 75, that'll be 600. So in this case here, I'm going to have a total benefit from consuming 8 units. I'll abbreviate that again. Total benefit of, what's going to be, 760? 760 as my total benefit. So we've worked through this in two different kind of ways. In one case, we knew the quantity, right? We started off, we knew what the quantity was. We had to go up and over to find the price. And then once we had that, we just had to find our geometric areas. In the second case, we knew our price and we had to go over to find our quantity. And then once we had that quantity, we could work out our geometric areas. Both of these examples were done for benefit, right? Trying to find total benefit. So with our demand, we could have just as easily asked this using total cost. Keeping in mind, total cost, that is going to be aggregating our marginal cost, so that's going to be our supply side. So let's just go through a quick example of doing that, and let's do that using these values that we already have here. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so if we add this scenario again, same equations, but this time at a price of 75, I want to know what is the total cost to society at a price of $75? So right in this case here, we need to find our total cost. Total cost is our supply side. So let's draw our diagram. 
we have our supply starting at six, upward sloping, so starting at six and then sloping up. There's my supply or my marginal cost. And in this case, I know, okay, we have a price of 75. We need to find out our quantity. And in this case, what you'll notice is that really, if we kind of just were to say, okay, there was my intercept of six. If I were to draw, I'm just going to change colors here. If I were to draw this line over right to that point there, right, just to give this some separate kind of bits, we would have area A, B, and then this little bit below my intercept, and there we would have C. In this case, finding out our total cost. Well, total cost, that is aggregating underneath my marginal cost curve. So that's going to be this whole area here. That is area of B and C. So I want to aggregate all of that in order to find out what my total cost is. Again, we just have a triangle and a rectangle that we want to add together. So let's take a look at that. Let's just get rid of that guy. So, okay, let's start off. Area of a rectangle, area of a triangle. So B, this guy's a triangle. One half, base, times height. C, this guy is my rectangle. It's just base, times height. What's my base? What's my height? So to start off, okay, in this case here, my base is that stretch there. Again, I don't know what this value is. I don't know what my base is. So this is what I want to solve for. But hey, since we're going through this, what's our height? First guy, zero to six, right? There's zero right at our origin. So zero to six, I have a height of six. B, well, B has a height from six all the way up to 75. So what, 75 minus six will be 69. And I have my height of B. What about my base? Okay, so for base, what we do is we say we have a price of 75. We need to work out what is our quantity supplied, right? We're going price down to quantity. So in this case, we're using our supply equation, positive slope, upward sloping, and that's price equals six plus six Q. Okay, Q, that's my unknown. That's what I'm trying to solve. But I do know that I have a price of 75. So let's update that. 75 equals 6 plus 6Q. Six okay, in this case here, again, want to get that Q by itself so I can solve for it. So to start off, let's get it by itself. Let's subtract 6 from both sides. So 75 minus 6 is 69 equals... 6q. Get that q by itself, so divide both sides by 6. I get 69 divided by 6 is 11.5 equals q. So okay, there we go. Let's uh, let's update that. It's a question mark. We know the value. 11.5. And well, hey, 0 to 11.5, that means I have a base of 11.5. So to update that, Area of B, this triangle, base of 11.5 times a height of 69. So 11.5 times 69 gives me 793.5. Okay, what about little C here, this little rectangle? In this case, this little rectangle is base of, again, 11.5. I'm jumping down below the axis here. I didn't have room to fit that in. And a height of 6. So we have 6 times 11.5, which gives us uh, 69 as our total, total cost of C. So altogether then, our total cost to society, total social cost, or I guess I could just go total cost TC, Total cost is 793.5 plus 69, and that's going to yield us a total social cost of 862, 
0.5. Perfect. And of course, right, I could have asked that question in completely the opposite fashion. Could have had the same results and a good kind of thing to practice. Could you solve this and get the exact same numbers if I'd asked this slightly different? That is, what if instead I had said, um, instead of, hey, at a price of 75, what if I had said instead at a quantity supplied of 11.5, right? Maybe not even quantity supplied, just quantity of 11.5. And then from that, you would have to say, okay, cost, cost, marginal cost, marginal cost supply. Okay, I know which one I'm dealing with, right? Given this, all we've done is we've just gone the complete opposite direction. We knew the Q, not the P, and you'd work through it oppositely. But should give you the exact same numbers once you solve. So hopefully that helps in working through these guys. Hopefully it answers a whole bunch of questions. These are the common questions I've been getting over the last, well, over the weekend and the few days before. So hopefully that walkthrough really helps to set many of you straight how to go through this. And again, this is something we'll be doing a lot as we carry forward with the semester. Any other questions, any other parts that aren't necessarily so clear, feel free to reach out and let me know.